Well, our next guest is a survivor of the Las Vegas shooting and as an attorney represents several other survivors, Brian Claypool joined us from a benefit concert for survivors in Los Angeles. Brian, thank you so much for being with us. Sure, thank you, Rosemary. Now, of course, uh, this deadly shooting changed your life forever and did the same for all the other survivors. A year later, how are you coping and where do things stand for all of you? Well, what, what we did is we formed a nonprofit called Route91Strong.org. So basically, when I was in the middle of the shooting and those shots were like bang, 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 I was covering my head. I thought I was going to die. So during the first round of shots, I'm thinking I'm going to die. And then when I survived, I said to myself, if I get through these next rounds of shots, I'm going to have to do something to change things to make sure this doesn't happen again. And within a couple of days, um, I was interviewed by your colleague, Chris Cuomo, over at CNN. And he connected with, with me with a woman named Lisa Fine. We formed Route 91 Strong a couple of days after the shooting. We now have raised nearly $600,000 to help victims of the, of the Route 91 shooting. That's, that's our method of coping. That's our therapy, to help these victims, to make a difference in the world, make this a better place, and not forget about those who, like myself, are suffering from PTSD. Yeah, and that stays with you forever. And, of course, uh, we just ran a story of uh, a woman who has just come out of the hospital a year later. So what changes were you hoping to witness a year later in terms of, say, U.S. gun controls? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I was demoralized this morning uh, when I woke up and, and the first thing I see is 58 doves, you know, being released in Las Vegas for those precious lives that were lost. We, we love the, the, the lives that were lost to death. We will forever be bonded to them. But then later in the morning, I, I'm watching clips like you just played of our president who, who said he could take care of this with an executive order. Um, I met with a U.S. senator out here in California a month after the shooting to author the, the bump stock legislation. But let's face it, well, here we are a year later and absolutely zero has changed in the United States. And that is sobering and demoralizing for people like myself and others in the Las Vegas shooting. Nothing's changed. Why do you think nothing has changed? I think nothing's changed because of the power of the lobbying groups in, in, in the United States. Make no mistake about it, the National Rifle Association, the NRA, is the most powerful lobbying group in the country. And, and political officials in the United States, they, they don't vote with their heart. They vote based on what the consequences will be for them in the political arena. And when they're being influenced by a powerful lobbying group, uh, they, they really don't care, let's face it, about how I'm doing, how other victims in, 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 in the Vegas shooting are doing. They're more worried about their political future. And you don't think that the Las Vegas shooting and the various school shootings, particularly the one in Florida, has made any difference at all? I got to be honest with you. I mean, I, I think I think it's pathetic what we've been facing out here as victims of gun violence. Um, I, I mean, how many more shootings is it going to take before political officials do something to have what's what I call responsible gun ownership? We're not saying eliminate guns across the uh, you know the United States. What we're saying is people have to be responsible to own guns in the United States. We need to increase. Uh, for example, communication about the mental unfitness of people uh, with the, the background checks, for example, that are done to issue guns. And, and, and really, all we hear after a mass shooting is our president is saying, gee, I'm really sorry. He goes and meets with the victims. And then guess what? It's back to work as usual in Washington, D.C. And absolutely. You know, it, it, I, I'll tell you, a year later, how I feel is we live in a really, really dangerous world here in the United States where you walk down the street and you're looking over your shoulder thinking you're going to get shot and killed. And there, there's no safe place left in the United States because we have 
political officials and leadership that could simply care less about public safety and all they care about is their political well-being. It's tragic, but the truth. Brian Claypole, thank you so much for talking with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me.